Hey everyone, remember I said I was um, growing mandrel uh, red beets in the garden um, as a test to see how they would grow? This is the biggest one. Take a look at this. This is huge. This is my hands put together and they don't even touch. And these are the other size ones right here. So this was about the average size. Look at in comparison. Look at that, you guys. This one is just massive. Absolutely crazily big. So these are the these are the um, red beets that actually um, were not slug eaten. We'll have to run the ducks through because the rest were slug eaten. But look at that size. Everything homemade. Hey everyone, it's Rita Peterson with Everything Homemade and we are going to do the last update for the summer. It's been a little bit since I did an update, but it has been incredibly busy. I'm telling you, I get up at three in the morning right now and I work all day long schooling for seven and a half hours of that day, still making cheese, still trying to get the garden and it has been incredibly busy. So today, instead of doing school, we got to get our carrots and finish this garden. So we are working hard because we we're supposed to get some nasty weather. So I was helping here, but I decided to do a little update. Here's Nova. They're pulling carrots and what we are doing, we're actually bringing these downstairs and preserving them in sand. And I'll show you what I'm doing and I'm going to do an experiment this year so I'm not going to go in detail but hopefully everything works out for next year and I will show you what works. So we've got some really good sized carrots here. Take a look. Really, really nice sized. All over the map. Yeah, awesome Nova and some funky carrots as as my kids call them and they're all going into storage so as you guys continue getting those two buckets when those two buckets are done you guys can take a break and then we'll go downstairs okay yeah oh ryan just showed another one this one's huge take a look at that so basically the rest of the garden is done the dill is done we're going to chop it the rest down we have taken all the most of the leaves off and we have save those the tomatoes are all picked and we are dealt with so the frost has definitely taken them they're getting pulled out literally we're cleaning up so once we're done the carrots we are actually going to run the goats through here they can nibble all the big stuff clean that up once that's done we're running the ducks through to get rid of the slug and slug eggs because it is horrible the slugs in this garden and ducks it's nothing like ducks to take care of that business okay remember this flower bed when i first planted it back in june and it was just a couple plants here there take a look now take a look at the time that has totally grown up and the succulents now i have those boards down to stop my dog thunder from digging for some reason those spots are just i don't know he loves to dig so as my plants grow up those those will come out look take a look at that and we also found this um, piece of plow in the bush and so we put this in as the center so what I want is the lavender here to grow through it and around it all flowering it'll look absolutely beautiful so the tarragon did well the lavender the English lavender my word is doing so well we've had so much frost lately and this particular lavender this is so climatized to our area that Ross doesn't even bother it more and more plants and take a look I actually extended this bed and Canadian Tire was actually throwing away plants for free out of the garden area and let me tell you these were so crispy but I have with some good goose poo and some nice watering all of these plants here that you see we're all throwaways and it's going to make just a fantastic these are actually daisies those ones over here are succulents so they're going to grow over the rocks um, this is tick wheat so it's going to be big and bushy flowering pink this is another succulent oh, it's going to be absolutely beautiful so this bed's coming out really nice this is another one remember we had the pigs running through here. There's huge lilacs and everything. We have completely transformed this. It doesn't look like much. We have laid these raw, these um, uh, trees here. We've cut down and they are bordering and we got to finish that side there. But take a look. 
I got a plant. All these plants are from pe people who actually gave me pieces of their plants. So sage, I want sage to grow up to the wormwood as a centerpiece there. Um, I have parsley, um, hyssop, makes such good tea. Oh my word, the, one of the best teas for colds and flus also. Um, oregano, all of these are perennials to this area. Sorrel. What else we got here? We have, um, uh, I can't think of the name, St. John's Wort. There we go. And then bergamot. Yes, bergamot is even a perennial. So all the height is going to be high back here, going to low, and I want everything to spread and creep together. It's going to take a few years, but it'll come. So what we did was we actually made a walkway through this bed. Because this bed's so big, it's kind of nice so we can get a walkway through. This is daylily. Everything, remember, it's fall right now, so everything is is um, losing its green. There's some irises there. The irises are not in the permanent home. I literally just put them in the ground because I don't know where I should put them. Take a look. I'll kind of go height here. This is a 15-foot tree that we planted. One of the garden centers had it on sale. It's the last one. is a, a Schubert... Um, Choke cherry. So it's going to be a centerpiece in here. Absolutely gorgeous. We got another centerpiece here. And then you see all these sticks with flags? Those are actually an heirloom rhubarb that a friend gave me. It's very, very sweet, delicious rhubarb. So everywhere where there's a stick with a flag, I've actually put a root. So on this side of the bed is all going to be rhubarb and horseradish um, bed. The one over there, it's all going to be medicinal herbs. And then this middle one, I'm not quite sure yet exactly what I'm doing. Kind of making this one up as I go. So there's going to be actually three separate beds. We are going to put a walkway just like the one over there is going to happen here and the logs through. So this is a big development. Would look really, really pretty. Okay, so another thing, this is where the pigs were originally. I had planted tomato plants in here, which did awesome. And then I've also used this bed now to just plant um, plants that don't have a home yet, but have a future home. So these are Juneberry strawberries that another person gave me. Uh, and I just literally put them in here because this I don't have the permanent home. And I wanted it just to get settled and I'll transplant that next year. So those are Juneberry. And then these, all these strawberries here. And in this cup that I got a transplant today, they are all Kent strawberries. And these are beautiful, huge, delicious strawberries. And these are all runners, actually from my mom, who grows Kent. And I took all her runners this year, and I planted them in here to get a head start. And then once we got the orchard ready, they're going in. These here, in pots that are buried, they are actually were cuttings that I did in June. They are sea of buckthorn and they are going to go into the orchard. Those are all female and these are all males. And they actually got new growth coming and they're doing good. So everything in here is literally just put in to um, overwinter this year. Okay, so I cut all my dead out of my raspberries. Clean them right up. They're looking, looking good. And then my husband's in construction zone here. Um, we are, we made a porch here for in front, which are gonna have steps. And we're getting ready and I'll show you what we're doing here. So this is the duck house. Um, we cleaned everything right up. And so what we're doing is we're having a watering system. So each, so we can hold some water throughout the winter in here. So that's on top. The bottom here, now if you've ever raised ducks, you know how bad they are with water. What we want to do is build a ramp up here because the ducks, the geese, the guinea, and the silkies are going to be on this side. So they can walk up. My husband's going to make nest boxes in here, nest boxes to go underneath, a floor up here. Um, they come in here. This is wire mesh. What's going to happen is we're going to have a waterer right here. They're going to come in drink then you see this board here is going to come and it's going to block here and all the way around 
And what that's going to do is when they splash water, the water's going to drip down in here. This tub is going to go, the water's going to um, drip down where the plastic is, and I'm going to exchange this tub once a day. And that way, they're not dragging their water. And I really hope this system works. We have tried four other systems, and it's been a disaster. But this one, I think it would work really good. Then we're going to redo the trees like we did on that side over here for the guinea. So this is getting totally revamped at the moment and getting ready for the winter. And you guys want to see some birds? Take a look. You'll notice a huge difference. Hey, Thunder. Huge difference in size. <clears throat> That's this noise of the guineas. That's the guinea fowl. And we'll just go in here at first. And the guinea fowl, I won't free range this year, but next year I will. So take a look at them. Aren't they just beautiful? You notice the silkies aren't in here. They're actually out running around during the day and at night I bring them back in here. So that's them right there. Beautiful. And noisy. Because I'm in here. Alrighty, let me just latch this for a quick sec. Okay. And take a look now at the Australorps. This is Mr. Rooster. He has seven of them. Take a look at the hens. Um, uh, Isa Browns, which are the brown birds. They're still laying. These guys aren't laying yet. I'm probably about a month yet till they're laying. Um, the Bard Rock Rooster there. He's here until uh, until everybody gets laying. We got our ducks. Our beautiful geese. And more of the Australorps. They're running all over the place. You see them all? Look at them. They're all free range now. There's Stella over there chewing her cud. And it's just such a beautiful, beautiful fall this year. And here are the silkies. There's a little buff. And I've got uh, too many roosters, so we're going to have to call some roosters. But the white, big white one here, kind of about my shadow in here. But the big white one here, which my daughter's named Little Puff, <laughs> that's a rooster that we're keeping. So I'm keeping one of the white roosters, and I'm going to keep one of the um, partridge roosters, which which is one of those brown ones in the background. And then we're calling five other ones. The little white painted um, black and white one is a hen. There's um, that pure bluish blackish silky over there is a hen. Um, so I got about five, five hens, not as much as I wanted. More roosters, so I'm going to have to hatch out some myself. But it's a good start for this year. So that's, that's my birds right now. They're just enjoying the day. And Stella's been doing really good. Yeah. Stella has been doing incredibly well. She's a big girl now. Aren't you, Stella? Do you want to say hi to them? Hey, girl. She's really tame. And she's doing just incredibly well. The kids work with her. She's she's going to be just a wonderful milk cow. Absolutely wonderful milk cow when she gets old enough. Hey, girl. Aren't you just adorable, huh? Good girl. So there's Cinnamon. That is Stella's mom. And she's in the opposite end of the property in this pasture. And she's sunning herself right now. She's doing wonderful. I am milking her twice a day right now. And I'm still making cheese. I'm actually making yogurt. I'm making kefir. So I'm going to be throwing some videos out once I get more in the house here of all those things um, too. And she has just been such a good, awesome, awesome milk cow. Really. I mean, she has her moments, but she's a really good girl. Okay, the other thing is, remember this bed that I planted the peppermint and the spearmint? Take a look in the oaks. So there's the faith oak right over there. 
And remember, it's fall time, so everything, it's uh, September 28th today, and everything is, um, well, turning color, and it is a beautiful fall. Like, take a look at those trees, you guys. It has been such a beautiful, beautiful fall. Take a look at that. I try not to make you guys dizzy, but take a look at the scenery on the property. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab those carrots. I'll meet you inside and I will show you what we got for storage, what we did in the cold room, and what we're doing with the carrots quickly and give you an update there. Okay, so take a look at those carrots. So this is one of the first row. And these are big buckets or containers that we're putting them in. These are two that are finished and in each um, container holds 234 carrots. So in each one of these there's 234. So there's full of sand. Each layer there's a, some sand. And the paper's on here just so the moisture just doesn't um, disappear as much. So we're filling these buckets. They're actually on wheels because they're very heavy but they move very easily back and forth and we're putting them here for now because my husband is revamping also the cold storage so and take a look at the cold storage I'll show you what we, what we did this year and we're just gonna go black just for a second so take a look we did 55 um, quart jars of pickles we did 45 quart jars of red beets um, these are two quart jars, and we did 10 of those of dill carrots. Um, we did five gooseberry um, jam, af I think about 45 um, apple sauce. And so this is all in our cold storage area. And you'll notice there's lots of containers in here. There's food in here. There's lots of things stored in this cold storage area. We also did apple chips. Where are my apple chips? Take a look, you guys. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Take a look. Apple chips. So we've got two of these olive jars. Now, when my husband was working at a company, they used to use these olives, and they threw out these jugs. So instead of throwing them out, we kept them and they make awesome storage. So we did lots of apple chips. The other thing we've made is um, tomato chips, which I'm just looking to see see where they are. Ryan, do you know where the tomato... Oh, there we go, tomato chips. So just, just taking a look. This is... I'm going to do a YouTube video on, on this. These are homemade um, tomato chips. Look at that. This is an awesome way to preserve your tomatoes. And taste delicious. Absolutely delicious. So that's a little update. And so that's the last update I am going to do. Um, and we're just going to head into some cooking, some dehydrating, all that stuff. We also made strawberry currant jam, as you can see here. So that's what um, we have here. Come to think about it, this is dill. This is all dried dill here. So I take it and when I need it, I put it through my um, uh, little grinder and I just mince it up. Those are my dehydrators. So take a look also. I'm just going to walk around here. These are all the squash, you guys. In each basket is about 45 squash. Look at the beauties. And I will do a video on how to save the seed from these. Um, but these here, these ones are going to get used first because they had never got a chance to harden off. These two um, have had a chance to harden off. So everything's looking good. I got cucumber seeds there drying. Just lots and lots of things happening lots and lots of things happening so you guys you take care and I will see you on the next video